All right. It's only one and two yesterday after three and oh sweep on Friday, but we're going to get it back on track here today. Mark Zinno leading us off with the Astros and the Rangers. Now, the Astros, a team that we've had success, at least at home, backing team total over, they've stopped scoring recently, Mark, but you believe, as you always do, that Framber is the color of your energy. He is, and what the Astros need is a slump buster, and her name is Tyler Molly. Uh, Tyler Molly, <laughs> who is pitching for the Texas Rangers, last pitched in April of 2023. So it's been a long time. We're talking 16 months, uh, you know, since this guy last threw a pitch in anger in Major League Baseball. Look, Molly was pretty solid back in 2023. Um, you know, in the, he made four starts. He had a 3 one ERA and a 1.05 whip. But it's just really hard to know what you're going to get from Molly at this point in time. And I don't know that he's necessarily going to pitch all that long in this game. And that brings the Texas bullpen into play here, which is, well, god-awful. And so uh, I'm banking on the fact that even if the Astros stumble early and aren't scoring all that much, guess what? Um, they should be able to, getting a full nine at bats, get themselves an opportunity to be able to get into this game here uh, and score late. All that said, you know, Framber uh, has been one of the more reliable starters for the Houston Astros. And, um, you know, he hasn't faced them yet this year, which is odd considering they're in the same division. Was pretty good against them last year. Nothing too special. Made three starts, went one and two, but um, you know, wasn't terrible, but wasn't great. I just like Framber in this spot here against a Texas lineup that isn't scoring. Last year's Texas team scored a lot, so when you're one and two against them, that's not surprising. This is not a Texas team that I think can score all that much here. So uh, it's also a Texas team that doesn't hit lefties particularly well. Uh, when you talk about uh, you know their, their ability to score, they're, they're middle of the road. They have a 257 batting average against lefties this year, you know. So I, I just don't see a lot of offense coming out of the Texas Rangers. And once they get into that bullpen, if they don't get to Molly, I think the Rangers will be this, uh, on the right side. I'm sorry, the Astros rather will be the right side of this thing when when we all come out on the other side. So uh, give me the Astros on the money line here. Short price uh, for Houston, all things considered. Astros is a short favorite. Smash the like button if you agree with Mark there. For my half of double play, I am dipping straight out of the BP playbook here. Orioles are taking on the Blue Jays. These teams have combined, I think, to go over in about 100 straight games. They played each other last week. Three of the the four went over. Guess what I'm doing, Zeno? You're doing the wrong thing and taking the under. I am taking the under. Uh, I will disagree with the first part of that sentence. I am taking the under. I believe in Grayson Rodriguez. I believe he is one of the better pitchers in the American League. Don't think I should get much argument there. He started 20 times this year. He has given up more than three runs, three earned runs, only four times. So I'm pretty confident. Most of the time, I think he's given up two earned runs or less, 14 of those 20 starts. So I think he could keep those Toronto bats silent here on Tuesday evening. Am I a little nervous with the prospect of Toronto's bullpen in those late innings going against this Baltimore offense? I certainly am. But I think the starters, Rodriguez and Chris Bassett, will give us a big enough cushion. Look, the teams are coming off an off day on Monday. I think it'll cool the bats off enough. Eight and a half is the number here. It's contrarian. It's what I do. It's ugly. It's hold your I nose. You, I know you don't agree with it. I, I like um, under I eight and a half. Look, to your point, like I would probably be more comfortable with a first five play here because Bassett last year at least was good at home. You take the Toronto bullpen out of it. And oh, by the way, if they get to five runs before the first five innings, chances are they're probably going over eight and a half uh, if that's the level. So I would probably more endorse a first five under and oh. leave – the Toronto bullpen out of it. Leave both of these bullpens out of it, to be perfectly honest with you, because even at that, the Orioles' bullpen isn't what it is last year. Very middle of the road. They can be beaten. So uh, that would just be my comfort level. Because when I looked at the game Um, initially, I thought, probably an over. Before the show, Mark Zeno listened uh, to the fact that I was going to give out the under on the Blue Jays-Orioles and said, you want to bet on it? I said, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. That's exactly the points of this show. So I will be betting on it. Uh, Comment with your favorite bets for Tuesday down below. I've got a 5% bet up right now on my page. I'll talk about here in just a little bit. I do want to bring up, by the way, yesterday's half of the double play that I gave out, which was the Mets. Since you called Sean Manea a cabbage patch doll, I don't think he's given up a run. 
I mean, he, he, he gave up nothing again. Uh, he's thrown 14 straight scoreless innings since that, since you called Sean Manea that. There you go they, right there. I, I played against him in that game, didn't I? It was against the Yankees, right? Uh, yeah. I, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to call Grayson Rodriguez and Chris Bassett Cabbage Patch Dolls. There you go. Let's see if it works. Morning wager juju, Cabbage Patch Doll style. Okay. Show best bet coming up in just a little bit. Again, comment down below with your favorite bets. But I did mention it just a minute ago. I have a 5% max bet on the docket for Tuesday on my page. This is just my fifth 5% play of the season. Uh, Zeno, I am 3-1 and one so far, 75%. The only loss, I got a little greedy with the last one. I took Blake Snell to record a win. He left the game with a lead. The bullpen blew it, and then the Giants won the game anyway. That stunk. Today, we, I'm seeing big-time advantages on this. I love the spot. Head on over to my page, wt.buzz slash bp, like the screen says. What do you have on the docket for Tuesday? By the way, both Mark and I are going to be on Wager Talk today later, so you're getting a lot of us here on the YouTube channel. Yes. My God. Uh, listen, I, I, you and I talked about this last night. I've been contemplating a 5% play today on a game that I really like. I got to do a little bit more research. I, it will be a 4% play. I'll have at least two plays up today as well. By the way, uh, Wood has two thumbs up and is on a 7-0 and heater. This guy right here. <laughs> uh, 7-0. and Don't let that wager talk leaderboard on this website fool you. I'm 7-0. and 8-1 and in the last week. So you can all bite me in your... Doesn't okay, count money now, we're not, now we're getting out of hand here. We're getting okay, out of no, hand. We're, we're just calling. We're calling it like it is. Okay. I'd rather be seven and zero than nine and five. You want to know why? Because seven and zero means I don't lose. Period. So anyway, I'm going to sit here and thank, thank you. <laughs> nine and five. Okay. I'm seven and zero. Deal with that. What? What? What, what are you making? Serenity that face now. I, no, 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 there's no, no, a lot no. of reasons I'm making that face right now. There's Have a lot I of reasons. Said anything that is not true. No, you haven't. You're yeah. you're an honest have man, I Mark Zeno. You always have been. Thank you. Yeah, you always. I'm you've never lied to me. You've never lied to the public. You've you've always been a you've always been a stand up guy. You're an American in this icon, case, really. I'm the opposite of George Costanza. <laughs> I am a man of integrity. Not really artistic, but you know, you're not autistic and you have no integrity. Um, no, I have integrity. So I've said nothing that isn't true. I'll have two plays up on the side. I'm really going to try to if I can get to that point, I will put this in the write up, folks. I will give you the catalyst reason as to why I got it to a 5%. I got to do a little bit more digging here, but uh, we are certainly uh, will have at least a 4% play up on the site today. Two plays total. We're going to keep it rocking and rolling here and try to stay uh, undefeated. 5% Make play for me. 7-0 and run from Mark Zinno. Life is good. Uh, you know where? Uh, who else uh, his life is pretty good right now? Zinno is Dylan Cease. This man is on fire. You may recall, it was last Wednesday, you and I were on first pitch, and I said, look, I know the numbers after a guy throws a no-hitter aren't that great, but Dylan Cease's numbers are too good to ignore. Guess what he did? He dominated the Dodgers. I mean, my goodness, Mark, the run this guy has been on, Cease, over the last month or so has just been otherworldly. He was the NL Pitcher of the Month for July. He's facing the Pirates today. Your boy Bailey Falter on the mound for the Bucks. Pittsburgh doesn't hit right-handers well. Please explain. I mean, is there any reason we should not all just run to the window right now and not bet San Diego first five minus half a run? Bailey Falter. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I really like this spot here for San Diego um, and going up against Falter. I, it barely falter for me is the same as like I played last night. If you guys bought my plays, it was uh, I played against Kyle Hendricks of the Cubs. And every time I bet against him, he seems to be Cy Hendricks uh, because the guy's fantastic. But his ERA is in the freaking stratosphere. And I feel like Bailey falter has been the same thing all season long. Every time I play against this clown, uh, he's he's lights out. And um, this is the same guy last year who was just getting rocked and. He's been pretty decent for Pittsburgh. He doesn't get a lot of run support because the Pittsburgh offense is bad. Look, that's really what you're banking on here, that Dylan Cease is going to shut down Bailey Falter. The Padres are okay on the road against lefties. They're much better against righties. On the road in, in the macro, in the big picture on the season, they're fantastic when it comes to scoring. They score more away than they do home. So there's edges there offensively to San Diego. But this is a spot here where you get through five and, I don't think Cease gives up more than a run. If he does that, I, I think San Diego's got enough pop um, against Bailey Falter. 
to put up a couple of runs here. Um, very small sample size with most of the guys in this lineup with Profar and Machado and everybody else. But, you know, the, the, the very small sample size says they're all batting 400 against them. So I think we get to falter. I think Dylan Cease uh, is also a guy that is worth backing right now, despite the fact that he's been so on fire. Some may say, oh, maybe it might be worth, might be prime for some aggression. Dylan will never cease to amaze us. Has that there? There you go. Dad joke of the day. Uh, we'll call it. Wow. That note. First five minus a half. Yes. First five minus a half. It is for our show. Best bet on San Diego. Cease. There have been eight times this season, Mark. He's gone at least six innings and given up two hits or fewer. Not yeah. runs. Hits or fewer. He has not allowed a run four of his last seven starts. Last four starts, one run, five hits total in his last yeah. four starts. And you brought up the regression, right? We, we throw that word around loosely on this program. I don't think it happens if, against the Pirates, who are 28th in WRC plus against righties. And Falter, to your point, he's gotten away. He's been lucky this year. His expected ERA is 4.99. So he's the one where regression is in the profile. Well, by the Smash way, we that throw like button if you're agree with us. No, we don't throw anything Hold loosely. Hold on, right? loosely. Everything, everything is very serious here, as you can tell. The level of the two individuals on this program bring a certain level of severity and seriousness to this. So we don't throw things around loosely. By the way, speaking of loose, uh, Team USA Basketball uh, is actually playing today um, against Brazil, laying 27 and a half. The only endorsing play that I would give, yes, take check your notes. It's there, 3 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Check's notes, yes, Zeno is correct, like usual. On like on a seven and zero run, nine and five. Anyway, um, but what I'm going to say is the only thing I would do endorse is take the United States in the first half. I would never lay the twenty seven and a half with them, but because they don't know how to keep their foot on the gas pedal and they won't. So you want to lay the fourteen in the first half might be worth a pizza bet. Just my two cents on Team USA. I have no American flag prop handy because I did not know Mark Zinno was going to hit us with that. But USA, USA, it is. All right, if you're not already subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, what exactly are you waiting for? Because this show's on Monday through Friday. I'm doing the Power Five now. That's back. We're on Wager Talk today at noon Eastern. See you there, baby. We love sloppy parlays. I will see you there. Let's cash some tickets, everybody. Until tomorrow. There he is. I'll see him Thursday. <laughs>